You're listening to Two Hotheads on Cannabis with your hosts, Mike Can and Heather Mack on unregularradio.com. And we're back. Yeah. <laughs> Two Hotheads on Cannabis. Still hot, still head, still on cannabis. And uh, we had an instant feedback. <laughs> yeah, we do. From Lean Lini, the goddess. <laughs> She okay. said, thank you for another wonderful program. Leap is doing amazing Aww. things. And I am sad as I am sad I have to leave as I wanted to hear a bit more of the musical. Oh, yes, we do. I want to see if we can get a clip of that to end the show with. Yeah. I want to see Judge Jim Gray's musical or be in it. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm glad that you also have beautiful self-esteem and consider yourself a goddess, as we all should. Yeah. And speaking of gods and goddesses, we have a god among us. Uh, Jim Fowler is right here next to me, and he's about to... <laughs> we just met, but he gave me some cherry passion Tic Tacs, and I just... I've been saying nice things ever since. Yeah, and you know what? He's got, like, the I think the fattest thing I've ever seen in the studio. <laughs> I know. That's like that the... We've had cool. a lot of shows, and that might be the biggest one so far. <laughs> This is this is officially called the Mike Newman because he's been refraining over there, been a good boy, and this is his boy. chance to let loose and smoke. So it's double length and double thickness. You've and been warned. <laughs> double penetration. Son, <laughs> you're ready to get ready to be enlightened. That's all I can tell you. All right. So Jim, Jimmy Fowler, you're doing this big Canamania event, number one. Yep, 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 yep. And I'm here to give you shit. Oh <laughs> no, Michael! <laughs> you got to number one. You got to speak into the microphone. Put the microphone okay, in front of your mouth. Okay, Michael. There All we right, go. There, there we go. go. All right. The first thing is, right, you, you've been supporting Ron Paul all year, haven't you? Oh, yes, you've I have. You've been all over Ron Paul. Yes. You live in Maine. Yes. There is a caucus today for the Republicans in Maine with Ron Paul, right? It's been going all week. My my caucus was actually last Saturday. Okay, so so I can't give you shit on that. No. You did you caucus? Uh, yes, I participated. And how did it go? Uh, that we're not at liberty to discuss. To discuss. What? You're <laughs> no. following the rules? I'm following the rules. For Some what? For Ron Paul? Know, I, hey. All right, have, all right. I you have, get off on that one. I have political correctness in some areas. <laughs> we don't we don't allow that on our show. In oh, fact, <laughs> it's, it's time to smarten up, <laughs> get serious. Let's get let's get rude, Jim, because I know you're you're very angry, and and uh, a lot of it seems to be some justified righteous rage. Tell us about uh, your your recent legal experiences. Oh, I, I've been. Uh, let's see. The <laughs> Where Tuesday, to start? Tuesday marked the end of a uh, near two-year uh, bout with ignorant cops that decided to kick my doors in regardless of my legality as a metal, medical patient. Um, uh, it ended finally. Uh, what when, happened when, this when, week, what, right? What, yeah, last Tuesday what happened is, is uh, on the 7th I think it was, what happened is, is uh, we went into uh, court. I I argued for last year at this time we had my last actual official hearing date and it was the date that we were set to go and choose jury and uh, in as I was there in the in the the box of you know defendants in walked all the jury prospective jurors that paraded past us and there were like seven people in there that I knew I was like, oh, Jesus, God, they're going to judge me by a, a jury of my peers. And holy shit, this is stacked in my favor. Yeah. Far out, man. I was all happy, you know. I was like, all right. And then my lawyer came to me. He goes, uh, they're going to blow this off for another month because they're trying to, they want you to use your affirmative defense today. And that totally inflamed me. And I, I was like, no, you know, here's the deal. The main law says that... We're not even, they, the, when, if they ever come to raid us, first off, I'm to present my card and, or cards, and they're supposed to, at that point, contact DHHS and have DHHS accompany them on, an, on a raid. Um, next thing is, is that um, they're not even allowed to ask me by law any patient information yeah. because it's all they you want know, you to s disclose your case all, early right, on. What the, no, what the yeah. deal is, is it's it's all HIPAA Act. It's all covered by yeah. HIPAA Act. Right. Just because I have yeah. it doesn't mean it's any less exactly. protected. Yeah. 
And it says right in our law that if we give them any information, yeah. breaking these HIPAA laws yeah. will be fined yeah. fifteen hundred dollars. So you're following the law. So and why, want, yeah. why, why in a court of law, if if I can be fined fifteen hundred dollars for doing this wrong deed and exposing my patients' very dear sure. private information? Why is it okay for them to force me to do this in a court of law? Fuck sure. that noise. Yeah. Seriously. And especially up front without them even presenting to the next so case against you. At this point, I was inflamed and I told my lawyer, you're not going to weasel me into that corner giving them that information. Absolutely. I'm not a fucking rat. Yep. And I told my lawyer, I said, here's the deal. I want this done today. No more 30 days, no shit, nothing. It's done today. And what was the deal? They came. I you, told yeah. him... That he goes to the district attorney and they drop my case down from a class D to a class E misdemeanor, which means that I'll admit to five plants or less. Class E misdemeanor gives me up to a $400 fine. No jail time, no nothing. Plus, I want a deferred disposition, which is like here in Massachusetts, which is like a Continue. continuance without a finding. Yeah. But only at the end, you have a mandate up there, you have a mandatory court hearing at the end where they actually expunge it from your record. So That's it's cool. no longer there. That's cool. Okay. In Massachusetts, in Massachusetts, in Massachusetts <laughs> you have to schedule that court and hearing you can't separately. Get, yeah. It's so much and money. It co- yeah, it costs a lawyer. It costs you and big you still time don't to get hire the greaseball some, lawyer yeah, to, Mass, to take it yeah. off your record. In Mass, you've got to pay off a Democrat hack to actually Ugh. get it. Or a judge. Yeah, or the, grease, the lawyers are the grease balls of the world. Oh, yeah. It's not the judges, it's the so, lawyers. So you ba- and, and, and I know the big thing for them is that they w- came back with basically the deal, but they wanted you to go on probation and drug testing. Oh, yeah. They wanted me to, to basically be like on probation. They wanted me to do scheduled monthly urinalysis. And they wanted my, me to, to waive my Fourth Amendment rights for them to come into my house at any given time. And you're and, a medical patient. Yeah, yeah. And I'm legal for this shit. I was like, what are you, fucking nuts? <laughs> if you don't go, and I told my lawyer, point blank, if you don't go and give them my offer as it stands, you're fired, and we can go right back through all this fucking shit all over again. I don't care. My lawyer's free. I'll fire you if you don't do what I want you to do. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 James. There's no need for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, we're talking business. All right, So, okay. So now it's expunged. Yeah, so, it's, so anyhow. This Tuesday it was expunged. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Yeah, they, they set the date. They, you, they you, agreed. You, you, the judge made them agree. Now, this is funny. My lawyer told me about this afterwards. He, he told me, all right, I'll put this before them, but they're not going to play ball. Yeah. Within five, I left the courthouse. Within five minutes, they were on my cell phone burning it up. Man, uh, uh, they want you to do the, the urinalysis. I said, for what? For a, a drug that I'm legal to use? What are you, fucking nuts? Let's waste some more money. Okay? He's, you know, you got a point. And then he brought up the Fourth Amendment thing, and I was like, Dude, listen, they just kicked my door in, and I got all this shit going down. You think I'm going to give them the right to come yeah. in my house and get, fuck you. Yeah. You know? And uh, so we did what we did, and we put it, he said, okay, we got to put it before the judge first. And he's got to okay this whole thing. So the judge turned around, they brought it before the judge, and he says, okay, present this to me. And he says, well, we're going to drop it down from a Class D to a Class E misdemeanor, and we're going to turn around and we're going to give him this deferred disposition, and we're going to wipe it off his record at the end. And the judge looks at him and he goes, "Uh, okay, uh, let's examine this for what it is. First off, (laughs) you've been going for jail time on this poor guy for a year and a half. Now you're telling me because you're dropping it from a Class D to a Class E that you don't have evidence to put him away? Yeah. The he judge said, is no, your around. honor, no, your honor, and, and the judge is like getting a little bit inflamed at this. Yeah, and then he turns around and he says, and the second thing is, is you're giving him a deferred disposition, and you're gonna you're gonna expunge it off his records. You didn't even have enough evidence to give this man a fine. And he said, no, your honor, and the judge blew up at him. His eyes bugged out, and he started steaming. He goes, well, you better get on the phone right now with Mr. <laughs> Fowler, and you better, you better accept his offer, and you better make sure that he doesn't come in my court before me, or you're going to hear about it. Yeah. And th- that was it. Yeah. That, they started playing ball at that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's there for Fowler. Thank Fight you it. very you much for that. Impassioned yeah, you're smart. You go through a lot, and uh, you, you know, you... That helps that you were able to win that case for everybody. Well, Did you, you yell know? like that in the courtroom? Please tell me. Oh, let it. me tell you something. <laughs> when this happened, they called me back and they made sure that it was after hours and there was nobody left in the courtroom when they were dealing with this. 
They even held it because I had to drive another Are 20 minutes Are you a noise violation? <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, I tell it like it is. Exactly. Okay? The yeah. judge broke a law, and I pointed it out yeah. to him. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Absolutely he not. He pulls his pants on the same way I do. Okay? <laughs> he still wipes his ass. <laughs> anyway. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Did, did judge? No. no. Yeah, they, they got bidets. <laughs> yeah. Bidets. Bidets or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, there you go. Bidets. That's the word of the day. That's the word of anyway, the day. Anyway, so what the deal is here is, uh, you know, it is what it is. I get up there in, in the final thing here. In the after hours thing, they they put the, what they were going to do. They they presented it to the judge, and you know, um, I told my lawyer, I said, I want final say so that I can voice my opinion on this whole thing. And he said, Okay, fine. So I get up there, and he says, My 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 client wants to speak, Your Honor. And I get up there, and the very first thing that I said was, I reaffirmed. I said, I want you to know that I didn't do this because I'm guilty of a crime. I did this because. I feel that it's wrong that you should have to force me to give patient information that's protected. I don't care. I have a right to defend my... I have a responsibility, not a right, I have a responsibility to defend my patient's personal information. And I don't feel that it's right and prudent that you should ha make me display this in a court of law. It's wrong. And then I turned around and I gave him... I read him the riot act for not... A lot, for. Uh, not allowing me my Fourth Amendment due process of a Franks hearing to put the cop on the, on the stand and prove that he lied. We had the evidence in their own audio tapes that they you know, submitted for evidence. He didn't let me, he, he totally covered up that aspect that the cop was a lying little prick. Oh, yeah. You know, and he had zero evidence yeah. whatsoever. Um, no, he can't put the cop on the stand and prove that he's uh, crooked. I, I know about that. You know, so fact, they, they, they did that. We, I read him the riot act Because we that. looked at the photos. Yeah, yeah. That related because we had posted some of your photos. Yeah, you posted my script. And we looked it up. Six months before and they kicked my door And there was no way the cop could have seen the grow photos without seeing the medical marijuana prescription. Right, no. It, and the it, license. It, well, not he only that, they had a picture of me and they had a picture of my cat and the third picture in the group of pictures was my script. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can't look at two and not see and the third one And then the other two here, places yeah. it was What you listed. should have done is had a picture of you Selective holding blindness, the cat in one hand. Yeah. Selective <laughs> blindness. All cops have it. And, and when you did a Google search of, of that whole thing, the first thing that popped up was those two websites that showed all the pictures. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the, so and that really highlighted you the focus was on the, the prescription, too. All they like, had to do, let's listen, it's a web-related issue. Google. All they had to do was Google my name, and they'd have seen six pages of links with everything related to my medical stance and my medical position and my script and everything and else. Maybe it was perhaps because of that sort of, uh, you know, I think that's what it is because I earned the term around the, the, the name, the, the moniker. They called me Mr. Marijuana. All the judges, <laughs> all the attorneys, everybody called me Mr. We got Marijuana. Mr. Marijuana on the show today. That, okay? Seriously. Like that. All right, Mr. Marijuana. Uh, <laughs> you, we, we do have to... Uh, Hit some other news stories, and I don't want to let you go without talking about Canamania. Oh, you rock, dude! What is this? No, you? No, no. You? Is this going to happen, Jafal? I heard there's a lot of people that don't believe in 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 this event. What, what is happening? What are you doing? What's going on? Well, I've been called. I, you know, I used to be a fair, the fair-haired boy with the state legislature because I went up there and told the truth of, of the matter on everything, no matter what it was, no matter who it hurt. I spoke the truth. And they respected me for that, and they used to call me aside and ask me for side conferences on specific issues. And I respect that in them. Well, when I called on a couple of those people to speak at my, my expo, Canamania, they turned around and they read me the Riot Act, and they, they mentioned other names in the state that are involved in the legalization and the you know, pretty much bad names that are, that are you know, the riffraff of the state. And they, they associated me with them. And I said, well, wait a minute. Did you even go to my website and check this out and see that it's not we're not drug dealers and I'm not pushing the legalization of marijuana I'm there providing services to patients that need be provided uh, you know such as seminars for or proper ways of growing and I'm there I've got the seed you know the seed breeders there that are there going to be uh, handing out their genetics to patients and caregivers improving the genetic line in the state of Maine how can I be damned for trying to improve what we have? They need to open this and welcome it with open arms instead of sitting back and saying, 
You're the devil spawn. <laughs> so a lot of these people, <laughs> and a lot of these state reps, are you talking about like uh, political people? Yeah, yeah, yeah state representatives. And they don't like legalization, but they're cool with medical as long as it's well, hush no, hush. and I was told point blank, they want to keep it small. Yeah. Well, you can't allow the medical marijuana and not allow us the tools that we need to do the fucking to trade. Grow, to grow, yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. That's the. Yeah. I, I told you well, what we we're gonna have problems with you today because we're uh, gonna get you fired up. I, did, I really, you know, it yeah, wasn't very these difficult. Are, these are the right things to get fired up about. I'm on, right? I'm on your side over here. Speaking of firing up, we're finally yeah. firing up this. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> we're firing <laughs> up <laughs> all <laughs> cylinders today with Jimmy Fallon. So true. <gasps> but, but I'm glad that you're angry, and you're angry for the right reasons, and and trying to do a big event now. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to come because I'm not a medical user. But you don't well, have you know, to be. We'll General see. Public's inv- a lot. Oh well, there we go. It's a, it's a total 420 <laughs> event. Total 420 oh, on all oh. sides. And, and, and once well, who says I could be? I could be a medical user. Well, mass in, in about a year. What's the date again? Uh, April 14th and 15th at the Augusta Civic Center in Augusta, Maine. Wow. And uh, you can check out our website at uh, www.mainexpo. Com. It's going to be pretty good. We got uh, Pony Boy and Los Marijuanos coming from out west. You rock boys. We got Hemp Vision TV that are coming. Hemp Vision mm-hmm. TV is going to videotape the whole thing from start to end, and they're going to be posting, doing live broadcasts from what I understand. Uh, we Do you got, need any musical guests? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, really? I mean, well... <laughs> we've got we've got the venerable Amber Amber Lad oh, and of nice. course DJ Slim's going to be involved. Right on. And uh, it's tentative. I can't get should, through to DJ. Get my He's band busy. on there. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah, and we got uh, a band, a local band out of Maine that pulls pretty well called Gunhouse Hill. Oh yeah, they're good. Oh yeah, they rock, dude. They rock yeah, up really pretty good hard. Band. Really and, good band. Uh, really tight. Yeah. Really tight. Um, and we've got uh, the 420 comedian. Jeffrey Peterson. Oh boy. Oh yeah, he's he gets radical, man. I, I love Jeffrey's routines, and and he's gonna come and knock him dead for us. What and about the, the the two hotheads on cannabis? Why aren't we getting? Yeah, can we get can we get top billing on this event? Let's let's get uh. We need some money. You guys want to <laughs> come should... up? You guys want to come up? We'll we'll. What day you know. is it? For is us, it's not Saturday? free though. We have, we have we to cover could... our costs because we we're too poor to cover it ourselves. <laughs> like, seriously, we've got. There's I'll a big you, cost got, for us. We've got grassroots radio. Sorry guys, we got grassroots radio as. Their sponsors. It's not a huge cost, though, Jimmy. Uh, you know. I'm talking like you know, we'll we'll work. You, you got to find. Could, it. We could we uh, could one sponsorship. We could be there live. You yeah. Know? Not yeah. Coming. Yeah. And you don't we'll even know. We'll see. We'll see. We've done the it before. Fun, what the funny thing is, is, is I'm, I'm dealing with this. I got people from out west that are calling me, thinking because they're you know somebody from out west and they're associated with normal and whatnot that they should get free booth space at my event. I'm sorry, I'm not in this to lose money. You know, her name or whoever's name, his whoever from out west isn't going to draw anybody through my door here on the east coast. And and I have to think about this at bottom bottom <laughs> dollar. You know, it's a business, even though I don't like it to be a business. And and I have to look and see if it's going to benefit my situation and my event. Then by all means, I'll extend a discount, heavily discounted booth to you. But there's nobody that pays gets in for free. <laughs> Well, you okay there, Mike? Note. Yeah, all right. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just laughing at Jimmy playing businessman on the radio. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, we're just suit, Jimmy. We're just suit. No, we're we're in business too. All right, we're we're business oh, people, yeah. business folk. I mean, you know, we run the, you you run this little organ, oh yeah, you, this little you, event called both. the Boston Freedom Rally. It's, it's no like, big deal or anything. The, the money, <laughs> yeah, the money will come when it comes. You know what I mean? It's. Uh, like, I like, always ask my friends like. I, we want to be there, but for us, it costs a little bit of money. And uh, you know. well, that's what it is for me and the money and and, and the money guy because I'm not rich, you know. Oh, I'm just pocket turn line. You're, you're in a point. I live on social you're, security. You're, you're in a first year event, you know. And yeah. I've done so many events, and the first year is really the hardest because you got to try to break even. And then year two, you make your money. Year three, and and I totally understand that. Oh, you know, well, the the, here, the money guy uh, Gary Aslan, he's a really good guy, really good friend of mine. He uh, manages Nature's Palette Indoor Garden Center and. Mercer, Maine, uh, came to me and he said, Jimmy, I want to sponsor an event. I, I really want to see something brought here and, and improve the business that we already have. Let's do this. Let's put this together. And that's he's the man that yep. behind this, really. You know what I'm impressed by in the event is uh, the number of people that you have who are coming, who are sponsors. You know, there's a lot of uh, names on, a lot of uh, logos on that banner, you know. Well, let me tell you what it is. On is that the East Coast is prime territory. It's overdue for this type of an event. Uh, sadly enough, I offered it. I've got uh, Marco Renda from Treating Yourself Magazine. Marco, you rock, dude. You've helped me a lot. 
John V. John V. from Skunk Magazine. I love you, brother. You you rock out hard. You're both my sponsors. You're supporting me fully through this. And because you folks jumped on board, it's it that brought in the rest of it. And I really do appreciate you guys. And and I got to tell you that I did offer this to the Third Magazine, and the Third Magazine balked at it. They told me, "Why do I want to go to your piddly little event when I put on events of my own?" Well, I told him, I said, well, that's a shame because this piddly little event isn't so piddly anymore, and I've got your two competitors oh, screaming down Jimmy, your ass. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy. And, and he oh. said, you know, there was like a 10-minute silence, and, and he Come came on, back, Jimmy. and he's like, well, okay, let me throw me the information and send it to and let me look at it, and we'll be in touch with you. And now, it used to be that I was friends of that magazine. Now, since I'm putting on this expo, they come back and they won't even answer my phone calls. They won't respond to my emails. I get total ignorance out of these people. And it's sad. Oh, Jimmy. Okay, it's uh -oh. sad. Oh, Jimmy. See, I told you. Now, I got a problem with you, Jimmy. You, you take Why? It. Because you like the third magazine. No, it's not even about that. Why? Because you're taking shit too personally. It is personal. Let it go. It, no, let it go, no. Jimmy. It is personal. It you're this you're is my friend show. to my face. I am. When you see me in a crowd of people in Boston at the Middle East, you come over and you give me a hug and pay me homage. But you can't pay me enough homage to pay a four hundred fucking dollars at my show to buy a booth to support <laughs> my endeavor. <laughs> Fuck you, High Times. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna call Jimmy a pinhead. That, that's <laughs> I'll go there and I'll no. mention the third magazine. You know what, Jimmy? <laughs> we need a little healing here. Oh, man. This is getting pretty hot headed. I'm going to call Julia from Peter McWilliams. To <laughs> <sort you out. laughs> Julia, if yeah, you're listening, 617 606 4122. We need a quote for uh, Jimmy. We need a Peter McWilliams quote right about now. Yeah, uh, we do. Is there an instant feedback? No. no. Uh, all right. 617 606 4122. I think that's enough from Jimmy for today. Amen. Unless we have Amen. a. Amen. Uh, 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 wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do our that news was today. Uh, that was special. You know what? Uh, we should go to some music and come back and, and do a few news headlines and wrap up. But uh, I definitely wanted to make sure I mention an event. Uh, Students for Sensible Drug Policy Diversity Fundraising Party. It's uh, Saturday, February 25th in Medford. It's Shalene Title on Facebook that's holding that. She d works for Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. She books their speakers. And she also, I believe she's on the board of directors for SSDP. But she's a local person. She's holding an event, and in, uh, it's her, for her birthday on February 25th, and it's a really cool event. I want to try to go to it. It's a Saturday night, I believe it is, and uh, I just want to make sure I highlighted that today. Fantastic. Yeah, and we'll be, and that will be on the Facebook page, too. Yeah, and if you guys also, if anyone has events that they want to suggest that, you know, you guys can obviously post it up. We've seen lots of the Canamania posts up there and uh, other other folks and that you a, mentioned as well. There's another event, too, going on. Um, tom uh, is it uh, tomorrow night? I forgot to mention. Oh, keep, so it, keep events, it going. Yeah. Keep it going. A normal event uh, uh, fundraiser party. It's, uh, oh, I wish I remember her name. I, I, I didn't get enough notes in tonight. <laughs> but you can look that one up too. We'll post that one to our Facebook page. So there's a you know if you want to raise money tomorrow night, you can do it as well. There was just a big fundraiser in D.C. last night with the Normal Foundation, and I think Diane Fornbacher was really involved in that one. Um, High Times is doing the huge cannabis cup in L.A. It's an L.A. Medical Cannabis Cup. It's probably going to be the biggest thing ever to hit L.A. in terms of medical marijuana. Um, it's unbelievable how many events are going on. So we'll be posting all that stuff on our Facebook page and uh, playing some music, right? I don't know. We're running out of time. We'll, we'll, let's do some music and we'll come back. Okay. Quickly. All right. Broadcasting from downtown Boston, this is UnregularRadio.com. Two hotheads on cannabis with Mike Can and Heather Mack on UnregularRadio.com. You're listening live to Hotheads on Cannabis. We're about wrapping it up, but we didn't even get to the news this week. <laughs> Lots of news. Why don't we get to it? Yeah, we we I wanted to mention quickly that the big medical announcement for for uh, Massachusetts. We've been talking a lot about medical marijuana, and it looks like we're uh, even closer to that goal. It was officially uh, released uh, that it's going to be on the ballot, and uh, I saw some interesting articles about it. I saw one in the in a 
in a Latino like newspaper. It wasn't El Mundo; it was another one. Yeah. But like it was like you know it had the whole article about um, you know what you would think would be about the medical marijuana initiative, but turned out to be all about Peter Lewis and the fact that he is the main um, funder. And uh, so, therefore, trying to legitim- delegitimize the whole project like they do with they've been Soros. To do this. And they've been waiting like to do this. Yeah. They, so. Basically, there's like a deadline. And every year, like at a certain point in these initiatives, they release these reports that show who funded it. And as soon as he f- they showed that it was indeed him, we all knew it. And, right. you know, they jump all over it. And they basically say in the press, like, it did, you know, because someone from out of state has mostly funded this, that it means nothing. And it's like, what about all of us? What about all of the? the I think it's the, well, a pretty hilarious the PPQs. double standard. Though. How many PPQs yeah, exactly. have we done in Massachusetts that has gotten that money that had no funding? That's attracted the money, though. I mean, that's how you have well, to do it. You start we, small. We started from small. You start small. You built. start grassroots. But I think it's really funny because so you know all these other political you know. Uh, you know, bills that are passed and everything. I mean, it's all bought out. I mean, the the way that laws are made in this country is through money. And so as soon as it's it's one of our issues, then it's it's you know, it's it's unjust. Yeah, but when the money was we against have corporate us, it was personhood our, with, yeah. you know, political candidates and stuff. I mean, it's crazy. But that you know, I could get real angry about all that, but I think I have faith in the Massachusetts uh voting uh commonwealth. I yeah, I I have faith I that people are not swayed by these these, you know, these hollow arguments we're gonna, it just we're gonna win. from the We real. are going to win on multiple fronts yeah, in 2012. Will. Yes, we will. In Massachusetts. We're going to get medical passed. We're going to have medical marijuana. Yep. You're going to have an affirmative defense in 2013, January 1st in Massachusetts. I'm predicting that. Yes. Yes. We're calling it now. And we're going to have more PPQs passed yep. that show that Massachusetts is the state that has the highest support for marijuana legalization in the country and it's well over 50 percent you know right even said 54 missouri that's awesome but we, we have we got yeah. higher we're looking at 56 to 62 somewhere in that range and i think even higher i think we poll you know the young i saw it with decrim the young people come out for the first time for this cause they really do they understand it they register it's about jobs. It's about that's what it's about. It's about you know making a better community. They know that this cause, you know, legalization is the way that we need to do this. It's so obvious. Yeah. Well, it's obvious to us. Obvious to Judge Jim Gray. Obvious yeah. to Ethan Thamphy and uh, Jim Fowler over here. And you know, the theme of today, I believe, was uh, you know being on the right side of history and making the right moves and uh, you know changing the law that needs to be changed. So we all see the truth in. And uh, we we really appreciate all the guests that we had today on the show. This was a this was a lovely little show, Mike. Yeah, it was. It was a good, it was a good time. Are we gonna listen to that clip? We have to listen. We're gonna go over. I don't care. <laughs> we have to find the opera, the Jim oh, Gray. Yes, we haven't right. even heard it. This could be a big <laughs> no. bomb. Well, here's what no, this is. What are you talking about? It's gonna be beautiful. Uh, it has to be. This is a short <laughs> message from Ju- Judge Jim Gray, and then the title track. I guess I can call it that from this called Americans All. All right. American we'll leave it with Americans all. We'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much. Two hotheads on cannabis. Next week we'll be back with Gary Johnson. Radio. And uh, we'll be back with Nicole D'Amico and friends. It's yes. going to be, oh my God. Live music and uh, presidential candidate. No big deal. Just another just another weekend with the two hotheads on cannabis show. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> on regularradio.com. Song every day exemplifies the feeling that I think we all have in school at one time or another. We feel lonely. Uh, My parents say it's just the age, so don't feel alone. Well, every parent has said that, and it never works. Uh, So kids need to see that they're not alone on that, that all children all students, all people feel alone sometimes. Uh, you got to have style. Well, the style isn't just the flash. It isn't just the clothes you wear. The style is inside. Uh, so that was something that I'm trying to get across to people. You want to stay in school. We have such a high, ridiculously high dropout rate in our schools today, and it's unnecessary. The kids are making a decision whether they know it or not. And we're trying to provide information to them, like you saw in that one uh, uh, discourse, where how much more money you make if you just get a high school education and, and diploma. And then you double that by going to college. 
These are things that our kids don't realize, and they're making a big mistake by dropping out of school. So that's another lesson that I have learned in juvenile court that I'm trying to pass along in a fun way, in a, in a humorous, fun, engaging way, uh, and then let them, let them sing their songs too. Education as the key for us, our successes multiply. Opportunity is here, dreams can be realized. Equality is coming true. This life is real, it's not idealized. So salute red, white, and blue. Americans all. Unregularradio.com. Unregularradio.com. A 24-7 online stream of everything regular radio doesn't offer. Also without that wagging finger of corporate or big brother, this is Radio Unleashed. Unregularradio.com.